We're going to have a lot of fun in this section because 1.3 is literally only one page of notes. It's the shortest section in the course, so I hope you enjoy it. So we're going to talk about um, a simple random sample. Now random sampling is the process of using chance to select individuals from a population to be included in the sample. Um, remember that a true random sample has no bias. All right. So in other words, everybody's got an equally likely chance of getting picked. Okay, so suppose you're going to take a simple, I mean, a sample of size lower case n, right? Like say a thousand people you're going to call from a population of size capital N, like the 300 million people in the U.S. So lower case n is a thousand, capital N is 300 million. See, um, if you're going to obtain that sample through simple random sample, excuse me, simple random sampling, if every possible sample of size a thousand has an equally likely chance of occurring. All right, that's called a simple random sample or SRS for mathematicians because we are lazy, yes. So a statistics instructor wants to obtain a simple random sample SRS of three students from her class of 27 students. She assigns each student a number from one to 27 based on her role, which lists the students alphabetically by last name. She claims that each of the following are simple random samples. Is she right, yes or no? All right. Now keep a couple things in mind here. Um, she's got a class roster. She numbers everybody from 1 to 27, keeping in mind that the, the alphabetical names, you know, A's and B's are going to be at the top and, you know, Z's are going to be at the bottom. Okay. So if the instructor asks a student in the class to randomly choose three numbers from 1 to 27, the student chooses 3, 18, and 20. Those students are now assigned um, to be part of this group. Is that a simple random sample? And the answer to that is a big fat no. See, people tend to pick in patterns, first of all. So alphabetical order aside, um, when you pick lottery numbers, people tend to pick in patterns. Um, they tend to pick dates a lot. They tend to pick 5, 10, 15, 20, and so on. That's not simple random, then. It's it's not random at all. People are picking things based on, on patterns in life. All right. But in this particular example, it's really bad because the student knows that they're alphabetical. So a number, or excuse me, a name that begins with a Z, um, if your name begins with a Z, you know you're not picking a 27, you know. I'm, I, my name begins with a T, so I'm not picking anything in the 20s. I'm not going to play it safe and call like 3, 5, 6. Yeah, that's random, because I said so. No, it's not, right? I'm picking numbers because I know I won't get picked, if that makes sense. Or maybe I know who student number 3 is in the roster and I want to get him, you know. You never know. All right, so that is not a random sample at all. What about a computer or a calculator randomly picking three numbers, 8, 11, and 19? Is that a simple random sample? Yes, um, with a caveat. Uh, caveat means um, kind of a exception, if you will, an exception. So namely that computers and calculators actually don't make perfect random samples. They're not perfect. Um, get into computer programming, your first computer programming class, or maybe your second, you'll discover that that's kind of a problem that's been plaguing computer programmers for a long time, because computers are machines, so they want to follow order, <laughs> but random by definition doesn't have any order. So that kind of confuses computers. But anyway, all right, so then what about the student, I mean, the teacher puts the numbers on slips of paper, tear, or tears um, torn from a sheet of bigger paper. So you can imagine, you know, put names on, tear it, tear it, tear it, you know. And is that a simple random sample? The answer to that, no. Because the paper was torn, they're not going to be all the same size and shape. You're much more likely to grab large pieces. Think of the bowl or the hat where these pieces of paper in is sort of like a box of Raisin Bran. Um, the bigger flakes, the bigger piece of paper will tend to be on top, and the smaller ones will tend to be on the bottom like raisins, right? It's not random. Anybody who ever used Raisin Man knows that because by the time you get to the bottom of the box, there's nothing but raisins down there. Exactly. All right, what about three by five identical cards, right? Closes her eyes and chooses. Yes, that's for our purposes going to be close enough. It's actually not perfect because, I mean, was the bowl well mixed? Did she get a peek before she closed her eyes? That kind of thing. But for our purposes, it's close enough that it approximates a simple random sample. All right, we're all done with section 1-3. I hope you enjoyed it.